enter kudutha everyone got the syllabus you didn't get it you got the syllabus okay so tappa kudukringa pin panni kudu pin panni iruka okay so uh, we'll start the session so uh, before starting the session let me introduce myself my name is premanand so i'm handling indian polity and political science and international relations in shankarai's academy bangalore okay so like uh, i have 6 years of teaching experience and i also be a, a part of uh, tamil nadu government's textbook revision team for political science department okay so it's a, a broad outlook about me so the purpose of the session is actually an introduction to political science and how political science is a better optional than the other optionals in terms of scoring in terms of coverage of syllabus in terms of like overlapping with the general studies part so all these aspects we are going to cover so we are going to discuss certain things so which there is a myth among the uh, upsc aspirants that uh, uh, this optional is good this optional is bad this optional is very easy to score this optional is very tough to score so all this myth uh, we are going to break it today so in terms of uh, political science and international relations okay so we'll have a presentation so so what do you know about political science and international relations any idea about what is political science and international relations so what we are going to study how many of you are really interested in political science and so that's why you are here right so online students so we have around 25 online students so what what is the uh, uh, what is the crux of political science any idea you can chat me uh, you can write your answers in the chat box hmm? what is the crux of political science so what political science exactly deals about so why political science uh, the, the names looks like very uh, tedious uh, look, looks like tough political science and international relations if you like public administration sociology looks very simple but political science and international relations many of them think that actually is something very uh, scientific subject it is going to deal with something which is actually uh, not going to be very easy for us to understand or something like that nothing like that so political science and international relation talks about state already you would have studied about studied about state in polity right the same thing we are going to study here but in a somewhat different perspective than the general studies so anyhow we are going to cover the entire polity part entire international relations part everything okay so which is actually which is actually we are going to study in a somewhat different tone actually that's it but the same thing only we are going to study so what is political science is nothing but political science is going to deal with the concept of state okay so how the state got evolved how the state got evolved the present government system how it has got evolved okay so what are all the problems in this present government system huh? what is the positives what is the negatives how our relationship as a state with the other countries this is what is the state so we are going to deal the state from the time of plato aristotle like thinkers who have actually sown the seeds for this concept of state so state is nothing but our country right we should have state means we will be telling in political science concept that state should comprise of population boundary people and sovereignty in your ncert book it will be there okay so this state only we are going to cover but we are not going to cover what we have covered in general studies alone we are going to cover something extra what is it in general studies we study about indian polity right so we'll study about preamble fundamental rights fundamental duties we we'll study about president prime minister etc right so here we are going to also study about certain aspects of the state which is actually involved in the evolution of state so someone would have thought about what is state right okay how a state should be how a ruler should be how a ruler should not be understanding what i am saying right from that perspective we will start and we will slowly cover the polity then our country's relationship with the other countries this is the small nutshell about the political science and international relations so how we are going to cover really it is going to be interesting or it is going to be boring or it is actually like very tedious nothing like that okay so see here so once upon a time aristotle said that okay aristotle said that so no one can live without the support of state 
so he said in this way what he said is that a person who is living out of state is either an angel or a beast not a human being a human being can never live out of the state out of the state means without the support of the state you can never live in this world that is the meaning okay yes or no for example you are identified as a citizen of india so what is the citizenship of india india the concept, the, the identity given to you is citizen of india who gives this identity to you means it is the state you belong to india so the identity is given to you that you belong to india that is citizen of india so wherever you go inside this world you will be identified as a citizen of india so think of a situation you don't have citizenship of any countries so what will be your situation how you will be called you will be called with numerous number of names like terrorist illegal migrant you will not have an identity at all so your presence itself becomes a very big question mark in this world so that's why aristotle before 2500 3500 years itself said that no one can live out of state if someone is living out of state either he should be a beast or an angel angel means god beast means it is not a human being so now you can you can you can you can, you can add this word beast with terrorist who don't have an identity like a beast they're killing others they don't have the support of state there are anti social elements understanding so without the state a normal human being cannot live in this world that is what is the purpose of state that is what is the importance of the state so throughout this political science and international relations as the uh, this thing as the subject we are going to cover this only so what is state how the state got evolved so what are all the concept involved with the state and what is indian state that is indian polity part already would have covered in you are general studies that again we will be seeing in certain different aspect then we will see about our country's relationship with the other countries understanding so how well, so you may think that's a plato aristotle all these name karl marx everything has been given in syllabus it will be very tedious means no we are not going to study the philosophies of plato or aristotle we are going to study about the political thinking political philosophy of the plato or aristotle and that too in a very short form so entirely the paul uh, the, the plato chapter will be around 18 to 20 pages okay plato has written many books republic is a very big, big book we are not going to study the entire republic and all we are going to study only 18 to 20 pages which is actually very much influential to the formation of the state okay aristotle around 25 pages karl marx around 30 pages so all put together the the, the the western political thoughts which is the crux of the subject that is plato aristotle machiavelli Uh, on all these thing that is your last chapter in the first part that is western political thought that is the most important uh, chapter of this entire political science so that we are going to deal in detail then we will slowly cover the other parts of the syllabus okay then this is about what is political science right so there are certain myth about political science is an optional to the upsc examination the first and foremost thing the people used to tell is that it is vast it is vast so this argument is actually something which is not a valid argument at all so if you are going to study political science separately then it is vast only you are going to do a degree on political science you are going to do a, a phd on political science and it is vast but in upsc it is not vast at all because 70% of your syllabus of psir already knowingly or unknowingly you will study in gs the only subject which has around 60 to 70 percentage of the overlapping with the general studies is only optional is political science i can prove it in any way okay you can also check it and see you can take the syllabus of whatever optional it is mentioned in your uh, syllabus that is your upsc upsc syllabus just take the syllabus and compare with the gs syllabus just see the words which are overlapping with the syllabus and the gs syllabus you cannot find this much overlapping with any of the optional subject so the the syllabus seems to be vast why because it is already being studied most of the things has been studied in gs and one more advantage or what you are going to get here is that your preparation in psir is going to boost your score in gs so in gs you will level, to a level you will study polity right you are going to add some 10 percentage extra to it so it will be beneficial for your gs and also to your optional 
So I'll show you some questions which have been directly taken from PSAR syllabus in GS also. In essay, it is being asked. In prelims, it is being asked. Which only other PSAR student can answer such question. No other students can answer such type of questions. It is proven. Okay, I'll just tell you. Then, next part. Some people used to tell that it is tough. Why? Because the name itself is very big. Political science and international relations. Something very scholarly. We have to write a very scholarly answer. Okay. I'll tell you one data. 2021 result has been published. Final result. So go and check in the internet which optional has the highest pass percentage in UPSC examination. It will be PSAR. Highest pass percentage. Okay. The official data need to be published by the UPSC. But still, I'll put you some data here. Okay. Which shows that PSAR is the high scoring and highly successful optional in UPSC mains. How? Again, the same answer. It is very much overlapped with the GS part. It is not tough to cover and all. And the second thing is that, is it scoring? Again, this is actually, I don't know in Bangalore, especially in Bangalore, there is a narrative set that only certain optional are scoring, certain optional are not scoring. That too, it is a very wrong narrative actually. So something, see, one thing you should understand, the preparation for UPSC is not done only in Bangalore. It is done throughout India. Okay. So if you want to choose a subject as an optional, you need to check the trends that is happening throughout the country, not only in Bangalore, a small town. So approximately around uh, uh, 200 to 250 people will write names from Bangalore city alone. This is not the competition. Understanding. The competition is somewhat bigger. Delhi, Chennai, Hyderabad. Okay. Northern part, northeastern part people are writing. Okay. Central part people are writing. People who are not at all coming to the coaching center and they are preparing it. The competition is very wide. Okay. So, is it scoring means it is one of the most highest scoring optionals in the humanities subject. I am not comparing it with mathematics and all. Okay. So, that is very specialized subject. Only certain people can do it. Everyone cannot do it. In a generalist subject, among the subjects, whatever you can compare with, whatever A, B, C optional you can compare with, it is the most highest scoring subject. The proof is here. So, before going to syllabus, I will show this. So, this is the mark scored by the toppers. We have taken only the top 10 or 20 candidates and we have seen the optional mark scored by these people in 2021 CSE. So, History 306, Geography 280, PSIR 314, Sociology 2, 285, Economics 293, Mathematics is an exceptional, 315, Geography High in 306, Social 285, Anthro, which is 273, okay, PubBad 259, Hindi 284, and Medical Sciences 256. This is not an uh, assumption, this is a fact. So, and comparing to all other subjects, the average score, the average score of PSAR revolves around 270 to 280 which is the highest score for many other humanities subjects. And people. And one more thing you want to understand here is that the number of people writing PSAR as optional is comparing to sociology or anthropology, it is less. Okay, it is less, but still it is scoring good. Understanding? So touching 300 in PSAR is feasible with normal writing practice and some hard work is also needed. And... And one thing I can tell you, PSIR will never pull you down. Either it will push you up or it will be stable. It will never pull you down. Understanding? It will not scratch you completely. Your, your mark is 180, 200 out of 500. No. So, an average reader with good writing practice can easily touch 270 in PSIR comparing to other subjects where extraordinary efforts are needed to score this 270 or 280 itself. Understanding what I am saying, right? So, comparing to other optional, it is scoring means, yes, it is scoring, plus it is going to help you in your GS preparation. So, this is the added advantage. So, coming to the syllabus. Coming to the syllabus. So, PSAR syllabus. So, we have four parts in the syllabus. That is, in paper one, two parts, and in paper two, two parts, right? Paper 1, first two parts are there. That is political theory and international politics. Paper 2, Indian government and politics. These two are actually coming under paper 1. Paper 2, we have comparative political analysis and international politics and India and the world. That is in 
paper two. So yeah, I'll just open the syllabus. You can also, if you have syllabus in your hand, online students, you can uh, have the syllabus for your reference. Online students, if you have syllabus in your hand, you can have it for your reference. How many of you already have seen the syllabus of PSIR? How it looks? Very tedious. Is it something like very tedious? It is not at all able to cover or something like that? Is it opening? I think it is not opening one minute. So, this is the syllabus. So, first you can take the first part of the syllabus. There is a first page of the syllabus. That is paper 1, section A. So, so how we are going to cover the syllabus? So, first I will tell you how it is very easily it can be covered. So, first thing, the concepts like justice, equality, rights, democracy, all these things, you have a basic understanding in your Indian polity itself. Basic understanding. So you're going to study something in detail about these concepts. Okay. Then, then the most important thing in uh, PSIR is this Western political thoughts. So this Western political thoughts, the straight away it will be helpful for you in your ethics preparation. In ethics, part A, that is 125 marks of your ethics, you want to quote a lot of thinkers when you are writing the answers, when you are quoting, when you there is a need to quote the answers, what Plato said, what Aristotle said, what Machiavelli said. Okay, all these things it will be very much useful. So, in this ninth chapter, that is Indian political thoughts, already you would have studied about these things in your ancient and medieval histories, that is Dharma Shastra, Artha Shastra. And also something about Buddhist traditions, but we are going to deal something in detail about these things in the thing. Okay. Then coming to Gandhi, you already have an introduction about Gandhi in your modern Indian history. Ambedkar, of course, yes. Emendroy and uh, Arbindo, you will be, some people will be having and some people will not be having, but it is not an issue. So again, this Gandhi, Ambedkar, Dharma Shastra, Artha Shastra, Buddhist traditions, again, it can be used in your ethics. For writing your case studies and also for writing the answers in ethics. Okay. So then, so in this part, if you see already the concepts like democracy, justice, power, etc., already you have a basic understanding. And these parts, anyhow, if you're not taking political science also, you need to cover these parts to a reasonable extent for your ethics. So there is an overlapping in the first part itself. Okay. Then coming to the part B of your Paper 1, it covers about Indian government and politics, Indian government and politics. See this first chapter, this first chapter is nothing but your modern history. Modern history, which you need to cover anyway in your general studies. It is nothing but your modern 
history civil disobedience movement peasant movement non cooperation movement everything okay so coming to the second chapter the legacy of the british rule and different socio political perspectives again you would have covered in the modern indian history legacy of the british rule okay then coming to the third chapter the preamble the fundamental rights the duties directive principles parliamentary system amendment procedure judicial review basic structure doctrine everything you would have very detailedly studied in your polity okay just we are going to add some value to this part that's it so coming to the fourth fourth chapter again it is the working of the executive nothing but your president prime minister legislature is nothing but your parliament again you have already the entire second part of political science is actually fully covered with your gs paper 2 in your mains and see the uh, fifth uh, sorry see the fifth chapter panchayat raj municipal government etc and sixth chapter is nothing but election commission cag all the other constitutional and non constitutional bodies okay so coming to the federalism seventh chapter again it is the issues of center state relation again there is a chapter called center state relations and interstate relations in your uh, gs polity part then coming to planning again you would have studied it in the in your economics and also in your polity and these things are nothing but your society in india caste religion ethnicity in politics so you will study in society perspective we are going to see in the political perspective and these things you would have covered in your governance pressure group regional parties all these things okay then again coming to the last that is again the social movement is nothing but your society in india so this entire part from which you are going to get around 150 marks in your gs paper sorry uh, psir paper 1 is entirely overlapping with your first gs paper 1 and gs paper 2 so nothing you are going to study separately out of the gs understanding so this is the first paper okay then coming to the second paper coming to the second paper the first part these two yeah so yeah these two chapters are pure political science concept you don't want to worry about it see this third chapter political parties pressure groups and social movements in advanced and industrial societies again the same repetition is going to come okay then globalization anyway this you will study in all the throughout your preparation you are going to study about what is globalization what is globalization to india what are the positives and negatives of globalization again you will study in society of india in your gs1 okay then these parts are actually pure political science that is the uh, fifth and sixth part of pure political science concepts and see this seventh chapter this is fully your world history in gs paper 1 it is world history that is rise of superpowers strategic ideology bipolarity arms race cold war non alignment movement okay and collapse of soviet union american hegemony all these things you will cover in your world history part anyway okay in the gs paper 1 then coming to the eighth chapter so this is actually you would have covered in international organizations that is the subject called international organizations in your gs where you will study about wto un etc this is nothing but wto and here you will study about un uh, the, all these these international organizations you will study in your bilateral relations anyway for your gs paper 2 gs paper 2 okay then again these are contemporary concepts of democracy human rights environment gender terrorism nuclear proliferation again all these words you would have come across in one part of other in your gs preparation these are all not a new word to you okay then the last part of the syllabus that is india and the world is nothing but your bilateral relations in gs paper 2 so you will study what is the relationship between india and pakistan india and china india and usa india and russia okay all this thing again it will come only thing is that we need to change your way of answer writing like a political science student that's it so see this this entire syllabus you can easily find that around 70 percentage of syllabus is already covered in your gs that is the reason why the number of students clearing the exam with psir as an optional is increasing year on year and its importance is also increasing because it's a very dynamic paper so it will make you to 
follow the newspaper again and again so it will help you in your gs preparation also okay so at last i'll i'll tell you how we will approach psir in our classes okay going to the next slide yeah this is the trend of last one uh, last year last 2021 result actually first 130 students uh, optional syllabus and the success rate has been analyzed say if you take the highest number of students who have cleared in the top 130 is with psir and the reality what you want to know here is that the number of students writing with psir as an optional is lesser than sociology and anthropology so the number of students writing is less but the number of students clearing the examination is high understanding what i am saying if you see public administration or no, number of students will be writing too much but the success percentage is somewhat limited only so in the top 100 or 120 students if you take this is the trend this is the data which is available in your internet itself okay and so how this psir as an optional is going to help in your prelims preparation this is the most important thing because people used to uh, have something first you want to clear the prelims right if you want to write the mains so if you are not having a good writing skill but still not clearing the prelims means there is no use of right so how it is going to help in your prelims preparation so just see this part every year 15 to 20 questions except this year because this is an exceptional year every year 15 to 20 question is asked from polity okay so entirely it is getting overlapped with our psir preparation then international relations on an average 6 to 7 questions is being asked okay and apart from that in environment we have an overlapping with the international organizations which is dealing with environment like unfcc ipcc all these organizations we will again study in our psir optional okay then most important thing is that the current events the current events here it is written as actually uh, yeah so current events they are yeah persons in news and awards no not that uh, you can take like yeah schemes and government organization you can take so current events current events it is also having a high weightage in your prelims again as psir is a dynamic paper you will be updating the current events then and there so it is going to benefit you in your gs preparation okay so these are all thing and one more thing history and culture it includes three history that is ancient india medieval india and modern india modern india again you will be studying in our syllabus the, the from uh, from the non cooperation movement to independence and the legacies of the british raj to the indian political indian politics so that we will also be studied so maximum syllabus is getting in overlapped in the prelims preparation also so i have posted some question which can be answered one there are many number of questions i have not posted everything each and every year one or two question are asked purely as a political science concept so which cannot be answered by other students at all for example see this question one common agreement between gandhi and marx marxism who who is going to study marxism as an important concept means it is the political science student we have a chapter called marxism karl marx about karl marx so without knowing karl marx we cannot answer this question at all understanding so the concept of committed judiciary this committed judiciary concept is a pure political science concept the answer for that question is committed judiciary so every year one or two questions in prelims is asked from pure political science concept which is actually not at all familiar with the other students with other optionals so it has an added advantage one or two questions makes a huge difference in your prelims i am not talking about general politics questions i am talking about politics questions which are very specific to political science okay so this is it okay then i'll go to the yeah so here so here is how in your here is how in your uh, mains preparation how it is added value so gs we have already 
seen how it is overlapping in gs1 world history is overlapping society in india is overlapping modern indian history is overlapping okay in gs paper 2 entire paper is overlapping okay all that and ethics is overlapping so how it is very much helpful in your essay writing how it is very much helpful in essay writing this is a very important question see here this question in essay has been asked in 2021 philosophy of wantlessness is utopian while materialism is a chimera this is nothing but a statement given by karl marx this is nothing but a statement given by karl marx to study karl marx straight away you can write a very beautiful and now you cannot write because you are not introduced to political science once you start of studying political science you can understand about it again the same in 2021 again from karl marx itself one more question is asked history repeat itself first as a tragedy second as a farce this is also a statement of karl marx i'll 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 give a small princess about karl marx after everything then you will understand how this two essays are actually linked with karl marx okay then see here see this statement so this is the essay which is asked in 2020 there can be no social justice without economic prosperity but economic prosperity without social justice is meaningless okay then patriarchy this is a feminist feminism related uh, question patriarchy is the least noticed yet the most significant structure of their social inequality it talks about feminism okay so every year recently last 3 4 years if you take the dominance of political science in essay is very high why because nowadays state forward essays are not at all being asked only philosophical essays are asked since like half of the political science and international relations is a philosophical part easily you can understand these topics and you can write good answers for it okay once you understand feminism once you understand what is marxism what is communism what is gandhism there is nothing to ask in essay beyond this every year there will be a question from gandhi or marx or feminism or a social issue like caste religion etc okay so easily you can write an answer you can quote lot of thinkers and you can make your answer very rich so that will give you a maximum mark and push you very up in your essay writing okay so this is thing then i have just mentioned which are all the subjects which is getting overlapping in the general studies in prelims and also mains okay as we have already discussed polity entirely indian freedom struggle bilateral relations international organization environmental laws and current events that is partially and current affairs since it is a dynamic paper okay then coming to mains you can see freedom struggle parts of world history social issues constitution polity social justice international relations the entire gs paper truth the whole 250 marks gets overlapped and in gs3 security and environmental related issues and gs4 moral thinkers and philosophical part of it and the essay okay so entirely everything is you are you are going to study it in gs and usually i tell to my uh, students usually uh, people who are not taking political science also they are studying political science in their gs okay the added advantage is that they will say they will study political science and they will also study another optional so people who are taking political science will study political science and they will cover the entire gs there's a lot of difference understanding so so this is the thing okay so coming to how we are going to actually cover the syllabus how our classes are going to be so how we are going to handle the classes okay that i'll give you a natural okay so our classes will be for 4.5 months approximately 4 to 4.5 months or it can go up to 5 months also so so how we are going to cover means we are going to cover each and every topic in the political science but polity entirely again we are not going to teach like a gs we are just going to touch polity with reference to political science it will be a waste of time then the class will be for one year because polity itself is very big because so we have already studied polity in the uh, gs so we are going to see polity in a small nutshell but other parts including international relations we will see in detail okay so how how we are going to start political sciences the first class we will start with the 10th chapter of our paper 1 part a that is western political thoughts which is the base for which is the base for political science okay what is this western political thoughts what it talks about 
nothing how a state should be how a country should be how a ruler should be that is the main agenda behind this western political thoughts okay so first western political thought starts with plato even though it starts with socrates in our syllabus we are not having socrates because socrates the entire idea about socrates was only dialectics he has not written anything as a book or something like that so we are not having in syllabus so plato has given a written understanding about state okay what is a state how a state should be so if you go beyond 3000 years or 4000 years greece was the only country which was having 3000 5000 years you can tell only country which was having a structure of state okay so plato aristotle socrates everyone are from greece only okay athens we call it as okay so these people wanted to give a good governance to their people but that time in greece there was very problematic situation was there corruption was very high rulers were not ruling the country properly so they wanted to give a system in which the rulers will rule the country properly okay so every thinker are the babies of their situation only okay so some problems will be there in the situation so they wanted to give a solution to the problem marxism also same only machiavelli is also same only everyone is same only so plato sees that all the rulers who are ruling athens are corrupt so he wanted to establish a system to pick a very genuine honest person to be the ruler of the state for that he is coming up with a lot of theories in his book called republic so we are going to study in a short nutshell about this concept of philosopher king what is this philosopher king means only the educated people should be the rulers of the country only the philosopher should be the rulers of the country plato says it okay so how to find a philosopher means he has a system of education what is the system of education okay how to find out this philosopher king okay this is the scheme okay so after plato writes this aristotle his disciple criticizes it how only educated person can be a good ruler in world you can tell numerous example uneducated people have given a very good rule there are numerous number of examples that educated people given very worst rule so he has generalized things educated people only will give good rule educated people only should rule the country only scholars should rule the country so there comes the question mark so aristotle says that no no neither the highly educated nor the illiterate only a moderately educated person that is a middle path only can give a proper rule understanding what i am saying right like this everything is actually like a conversation if you say something if i am refuting something that becomes a theory understanding right so and plato also says that why corruption is there means because of family he is telling you just think about our politicians for whom they are doing all this corruption for their family and he is abolishing the entire family system itself and saying that communism of families no one should have family no one should have wife no one should have children so everyone will be the children of the state no one will have a family if family is itself not there corruption will not be there nepotism will not be there people will not think to do earn more money they will work for the state and plato says that state is everything and nothing beyond the state understanding right so then then comes after aristotle and uh, plato and aristotle this person is called machiavelli which is a very important thinker in the western political thought and he is the first person to delink ethics from politics so till machiavelli people used to compare politics with ethics this is only people should the, the king should always do the correct thing people uh, king should always uh, look for the welfare of the people these are all ethics yes or no yes ethical things machiavelli says that there is nothing called ethics in politics only one rule in politics is that cash the power whatever you want you do it there is no ethics in politics and love the famous quote of machiavelli okay if you want to kill someone to cash the power kill if you want to do some politics to come to power do it okay don't think about the means think about only the end end is catching power who is the uh, personality who is totally opposite to the ideology of machiavelli means it is gandhi gandhi says that end doesn't mean how you live is the agimsa non violence everything but here he gives some theory which says that like nothing is important than the result than the 
result that is the end justifies the means for example you people prepare for upsc right so you people you prepare for upsc so you clear the exam you clear the exam and all the news channels everything will come and get an interview from you so saying that i study 28 hours per day people will believe if you cannot study 28 hours per day yes or no but people still will believe why because you are a successful person you say that so i studied uh, i studied only half an hour per day and have cleared the examination oh my god he is an intellectual guy he studied only half an hour for upsc exam and he has cleared because what speaks there your result speaks there so people never people are not worried about how you studied what you studied you have studied and you have cleared it so that's what machiavelli says that king should be always concerned about the power which is the ultimate aim of the king don't think about he will think that he will think that no nothing like that okay just think about power and catching power and holding power is the prime objective of a ruler for that you can do whatever you want whatever you want and i used to tell to the students that if you want to become a good politician you can study machiavelli's prince he has written a book called prince he will tell you how to do politics in the in in a very hardcore way how you are going to do the politics he will teach you all the wrong ways to actually catch the power very interesting guy okay very interesting guy then now the state is actually these are all actually ancient thinkers mostly they are ancient thinkers okay so from hobbes the concept of modern thinkers starts who are this hobbes these three are actually more or less same hobbes locke and mill we call it as they are giving a concept called social contract what is the social contract means see here so in the present time also we are following the social contract only how means for example every 5 years election is happening okay every 5 years election is happening okay so before election what it is done so the parties are giving certain certain things after come to the power i will do this so whichever you believe that it is very important for you for that party you are putting the vote and five years you are giving them the contract and you are allowing them to rule you after fifth year again election comes so whichever party you feel that it is very uh, they will give a good rule to you you will give a power to them this is nothing but a contract yes or no yes so this concept of contract has been established by this three people only okay how they, these three people says that state is a contract state is a contract between the people and the ruler very simple between the people and the ruler okay and what they are telling in their contract that and all you will study in our classes okay then coming to the hero of our western political thoughts that is karl marx karl marx is the hero of our western political thought why why he is a hero means until karl marx the westic western political thoughts or the general political ideology is dominated by liberal ideologies liberal ideologies can be equated with capitalism liberal ideology means equated with capitalism liberal liberty means freedom freedom to do whatever you want that is liberty so the basic ideology behind capitalism is liberty i have the liberty to do whatever business i want the state should not interfere in it pure business okay if you see like for a state should not interfere means state should not say that you should not do this business i will interfere nothing the state should say the state should only protect the interest of the capitalist this was a system which was there till karl marx why karl marx was a very big figure in the western political thought means he is the person who gave the solution for the problems that are arised after capitalism okay so what is capitalism means nothing but survival of the fittest what is survival of fittest i have the ability i have the capital i will do the business understanding what i am saying he is not getting the food he is not getting the education i am not worried i have the liberty i have the ability and i have the capital so i am going to do a business okay so this liberty as a concept gave rise to capitalism so capitalism exploded like anything at the time of industrial revolution okay at the time of industrial revolution what happened is that the capitalist exploited the workers like anything okay so 16 hours per day 17 hours per day they were working without proper wages food amenities etc 
So by seeing this, Karl Marx gave a theory of communism. Communism was there before Karl Marx also. Okay, but how communism became very popular after Karl Marx is that everyone said what is communism, but no one said how to reach communism, how to establish communism. So Karl Marx was the first person to tell the route to reach the communism. What is the route? How? Through class struggle, he says. Class struggle. So Karl Marx says that throughout the history, there is always a struggle between one group and the other group. One group is nothing but haves, and the other group is nothing but have-nots. So always there will be an invisible tussle between these two groups, and this tussle between these two groups only pushing the history, pushing the history forward. That's why he says the word. The entire history is full of class struggles. Class struggles. Okay. So if you take the uh, the ancient time, the class struggle is between the slaves and the masters. Okay. Then in the feudal society, the landowners and the bonded laborers. Then now it is the struggle between the capitalist and the workers. Okay. So at one point of time, these workers will overthrow this capitalism and will establish a rule of the workers. This rule of worker is nothing but the socialism, and the socialism will slowly lead to communism, where everyone will be having whatever they need, and in that state, the need of a state is itself not there. What is state? State is nothing but the government. Okay. So why the government is needed? Tell me. To safeguard us, to give some services to us, to protect us. Why all these questions comes into picture means. people are inequal some are rich some are poor some are getting certain things some are not getting certain things in order to balance everything only government comes into picture so in communism everyone are having everything they want so where is the need of a state okay so communism is nothing but a stateless society governmentless society now i will just show the question which i have yeah so now this question was asked in prelims i said you right one common agreement between marxism and marxism is nothing but the final goal of stateless society gandhi also wants a stateless society that's why he wanted to establish panchayat raj system where self governance will be there first in the panchayat level then in the state level then the, but the stateless society is itself and utopian concept what is this utopian it can never happen it can never happen that's why communism is a failure concept because without state you cannot because people will be indisciplined when there is a no state okay for example you travel in a street you travel in a bike in a road okay normally human being mentality is this only when the police there they will be standing in the signal very hum very humble manner If the police is not there what you will do you will just go away so people always need a camera this camera is nothing but what state government okay this society is not at all possible and one more thing why the communism is a failure concept is that you know why no human beings are actually a selfish entities human beings will never get satisfied with what they have yes or no do you agree with me yes capitalism actually goes with the same ideology aim higher okay earn more do more business earn more money it is actually a selfish concept human being is also a selfish so capitalism is a successful thing i am telling that here 100 rupees is there i am going to divide this 100 rupees between the 10 people who are sitting here and 10 10 rupees for each one you do work or not you will get 10 rupees what motivation is there for you to produce more i am telling that everyone will become an ias officer who will study then what is the motivation now i am telling whoever produces more will be given more salary there will be a competition that is the ideology behind capitalism whereas communism says that everything will be divided between everyone equally means there is no motivation to produce more no one will produce the the population will become more lethargic okay understanding what i am saying right so that's why communism is a failure concept 
okay it is not utter failure why i am telling is a failure concept means the countries which followed communism have actually disintegrated ussr you can say cuba is no more a communist country vietnam is no more a communist country china says that it is a communist country but never does a communist policy it following a capitalist policy only okay people are not following it but communism is needed why if communism is not there capitalism will show its ugly face understanding there should be always a counterweight for a weight if counterweight is not there what will happen this weight will rule the entire world okay so communism is needed as an ideology to counter capitalism okay if communism is not there capitalism will show its ugly face that is very much detrimental for the human beings understanding what i am saying right oh huh? this is how we are going to cover the entire syllabus okay so after covering this western political thoughts we'll go to the other concepts like theories of state liberal neo liberal see what is this liberal liber liberty means freedom liberal means a country which has more liberty is called liberal state okay example you can say usa britain all are liberal states whether china is a liberal state no freedom at all understanding what i am saying right okay this is here we will study liberty as a concept and how it is applied to the state to the governance of the state that is called liberty once you study liberty then it is neo liberal i'll tell you what is neo liberal and all later then marxism see here this concept marx marx is study right it will be again and again be repeated in eight to nine places in the syllabus you will study only once everything is same only marxist theory of state will come marxist theory on international relations everything is marxism only so again and again it is repeated so it looks like lengthy but the thing is not like that see here here we are studying liberal okay so here we are studying liberal here we are saying as liberalism both are same only okay there we are studied as marxist here we are studying as marxism everything is same only okay so after covering the states we will come to ideologies ideologies liberalism socialism marxism and this fascism and feminism are very important again and again the question is asked why because fascist tendency is rising in the world in the present time extreme right parties are coming to power so it is in the current affairs okay then feminism of course feminism after this uh, me too movement and all again this feminist ideologies are coming into view what is feminism any idea what is feminism lot of women are there in online can you tell me what is feminism ha huh? what is feminism equal rights for men and women okay that is first wave there are three waves in feminism first wave second wave and third wave first wave feminism talks about equal rights between men and women political rights you vote in the elections i also want to vote in the election you contest in elections i also want to contest in the election equal political rights okay then second wave feminism talks about equal economic rights you go to job i also want to go to job i also want to produce more i also want to do business okay this is second wave economic feminism third wave is actually radical feminism okay this radical feminist says that whatever problems occur in the world the reason is men only okay why global warming is there men only why so many wars are there men only everything men only because radical feminists are totally outrightly opposed patriarchy outrightly opposed patriarchy they say that personal is political since for these many years you have suppressed us in the family we are also getting suppressed in the political life so count number of prime ministers women prime ministers it will be very meager number of women presidents it will be very meager so they say that since men rule the world for these many centuries men have exploited the nature because men always see things through the concept of war power etc whereas women see everything through the concept of peace and love since men rule the world for these many years global warming occurred these many world wars occurred and world is full of peaceless society because of men only feminist are saying okay so very interesting concepts how it revolves around uh, the feminism how what is the present status of feminism what the thinkers say about feminism these are all very much interesting concept it will be very much helpful for you in writing essays and all 
okay because usually people from other uh, optionals will never touch these topics and all okay they will not have a hold on these topics and all to write an essay for 1000 words and here we will discuss many things about feminism many thinkers about feminism etc will give you a very big good hold on essay writing okay then so then indian political thoughts at last we will cover indian political thoughts okay so here also see here these concepts also as i already said the basics of these concepts already you have studied in your polity that is justice equality rights democracy everything here we are going to study in a another level that's it the base is same only so rights is not going to change anywhere rights is same only but what is right different different concepts of rights we will study different different concept of justice we will study see and one more thing in political science is that every year easily you can predict the questions you just take the last 10 year question paper same questions questions only again and again it will be repeated in your examinations there is no change of questions again and again the philosopher king concept of plato again and again it is asked okay feminism again and again it is asked we can easily tell this question will come this question will not come it seems like it is vast nothing is there in it but provided you want to do some hard work you need to come to the classes properly take the test properly okay follow my suggestions how to write the answers how should not write the answers okay that and all it will come once you start attending the classes and you come for the test and all understanding okay in the second part as i already said it is nothing but your gs paper 2 there is nothing to tell here okay because already you have a very good understanding about polity we have studied in lakshmi kant right so we will just touch which are all the parts which are attached with the political science again if i teach you fundamental rights article 14 15 and all it will be a waste of time but i'll teach you how to write answers and how to quote the thinkers inside this part okay usually we will suggest you to go with actually you will have a choice in how many of you know what is the pattern of uh, questions that will be asked in your uh, uh, optional so you will have choices you know that you have seen the question papers not seen this so not like gs you will not be having you should write all the questions nothing like that so see here first question and fifth question are compulsory questions okay so each question 50 marks first question will you have 10 10 marks okay second question you will have uh, two 15 marks and 120 marks 50 okay so each and every part you will have four questions in paper one four questions or paper one part a four question one is compulsory 5 10 marks 2 3 4 right so compulsory question you want to attend so among this 2 3 and 4 you want to choose at least one okay at least one then part b how it will be there is that so again compulsory question fifth question is the compulsory question i'll just show you see here this is paper 1 for example right so paper 1 so part a will be there this is how your question will be so first question is compulsory you will have 5 10 marks okay second question you will have 2 15 marks and 1 20 marks third question also same only 2 15 marks and 1 20 marks fourth question also same 2 15 marks and 120 marks okay so now out of this four this is compulsory you want to attend so among this three you want to choose at least one in one part if you are choosing two here two questions for example you are choosing two and four means you have already attended 150 marks 50 50 50 okay then second part that is your uh, uh, polity part right second part b again here you will have fifth question that is compulsory you want to attend Comes two hundred marks. Okay, then among this three, that is six, seven, eight. Among this three, you want to choose one, or you can choose one and two here, three, four, five here also. Understanding what I am saying? So you want to write for two fifty marks. Each and every question carries fifty marks. Okay, you can choose three from first part and two from second part, or three from second part and two from first part so if you are choosing three from second part right 150 marks already you have prepared in your gs out of 250 already you have prepared for gs 150 marks but usually we will suggest to go for 150 in the first part and 100 in the second this is pure political science suppose you are not knowing you are you are not getting the questions here which is very comfortable to you means you can go there okay so this is the thing in second paper also same only 
okay choices will be there you don't want to worry about whether something which is not uh, not at all known to me comes in the examination what i will do nothing to worry okay and most more or less we will cover everything in the classes so there will be nothing like you don't know anything something like that will not be there at all understanding okay so this part fully i think i don't want to explain this part because it is simply indian polity only so this is paper to part a okay so here we are going to compare our political system with the other countries okay this is called compare this four chapters are called comparative politics we are going to compare indian system with other system the pure political science concept but from this only meager questions will come so most of the questions will come from this part international the relations theory part okay what is uh, balance of power have you heard this word balance of power balance of power so this balance of power was very well established at the time of time of cold war cold war the entire world is divided into communist block and capitalist block communist block is headed by usa capitalist block is headed by ussr balance of power so now the country is a unipolar world at present and it is changing towards multipolar world so at the time of 1940s to 90s it is a bipolar world then for a short span of time it is a unipolar world the only superpower is usa now it is changing into a multipolar world china is rising india is rising brazil is rising against again russia is rising okay so these are all the concept we will study then collective security there is a concept called collective security very good example for collective security is nothing but your uh, what is it no no nato yeah nato so what is this collective security means it's an umbrella kind of setup for example in nato 40 plus countries are there if you touch one country all the 40 country will wage war against you these concepts are again and again coming in the newspaper we are going to study in detail here that's it so these are all and the rise of superpowers cold war time how it was there have you ever heard about this uh, cuban missile crisis cuban missile crisis any idea cuban missile crisis you know one thing in 1962 it happened if that crisis would have changed into a war third world war would have occurred in 1960s itself okay so the entire world was divided into two blocks as i said like capitalist block is headed by usa and uh, socialist block or communist block is headed by ussr so cuba was a very close ally of ussr but it was near where us okay it was creating some trouble to us okay so that time that time the russian nuclear weapon with the in a ship was moving towards cuba for striking the us it would have been the first proper nuclear war in the world those things how it has happened why it has happened everything we will study in detail in the class those are some interesting things what we have not explored till now will be explored in the political science subject okay so so again this is this top this 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 particular uh, chapter is very important because it's very contemporary environmental issues terrorism nuclear proliferation all these things these are all very contemporary topic uh, there are like three four questions are being asked every year from the single chapter alone okay, it's a very contemporary topic and see here there was a question asked before 3 uh, uh, years in your essay so uh, about non alignment movement how many of you know you just go and surf in the internet 2018 yeah state the way it is asked from psr syllabus only okay what is the relevance of nam in the present day see here the same it has been asked see here here there will be a wait yeah this is it this is taken and written in the essay paper so relevance of nam in the present day so no one can touch it because nam you can tell for two pages for 1000 words who can write means only a political science uh, uh, optional subject student can write it so the last part is nothing but your bilateral relations so already you would have studied bilateral relations now we are going to study the bilateral relations that is with certain thinkers point of view 
so what they are telling what raja mohan is telling what suhasni haider is telling they are writers in the newspapers actually suhasni haider you would have seen in hindu newspaper then and there right so see raja mohan is writing in indian express so they will tell something about india russia relations about india usa relations about india pakistan russia uh, pakistan relations afghanistan relations etc so what you are going to write is that your general knowledge about the relationship between india and pakistan plus this thinkers that's it that's it your job gets over okay so this is the syllabus of psir this is how we are going to cover so first we will cover paper 1 part a then we'll move to paper 2 part a okay then we will go for the other things at last we will cover this only because this needs some updates okay at last we will cover this indian world because it's an updated concept so we will teach at the last so approximately the course will go for 4 to 4.5 months okay september 21st regular classes are starting the timing is 5:30 pm to 7:30 two hours of classes will be there on weekdays okay so if you have any doubts so for the for the benefit of the students who are in online so like uh, if you want to register from other branches like chennai delhi or some other branches so just note down these things i'll just write it in a fresh page so so this is psir bangalore sa so bangalore students will attend the classes in offline so other students can take in online the course starts on september 21st the timings will be evening 5:30 pm to 7:30 pm the classes will be on monday tuesday thursday and friday and after a particular portion of syllabus is covered saturdays you will be having test okay so this course covers the entire uh, i'll tell you the book list madhivanan i'll give you the book list okay so the entire course we will be having around 10 test we'll cover all the uh, test whenever you feel that you want to write some answers you can write on your own also and give it to me i'll be here only i'll evaluate and give you personally i'll guide you so apart from that periodically we will be having assessment test to uh, to actually test how you understood the classes or something like that so if you are not understanding a concept even 10 times you can ask me i will slowly tell you until you understand that is not at all an issue at all because the crowd is going to be a small crowd of around 20 to 25 only it is not going to be a issue for me to answer all your doubts if it is a very large crowd like 150 or 200 it will be very difficult for me to manage but here it is not going to be like that so it will be a very small crowd so you can use it for your benefit to clear your examinations okay so this is the thing so other branch students like chennai you want to register with psir my name is actually prem anand so chennai some other faculty is taking so if you want to register with me you can call the bangalore branch and you can register okay so for other students who are in bangalore you can come straight away you can come and you can register for the course so coming to the book list so other things we have covered okay so book list see here first part alone you will be able to refer some books actually but not the complete books only selected topics of each and every book if you take introduction to political theory by hp herba around 50 to 60 percent of the books you will be able to cover haywood is only for reference you don't want to refer fully okay haywood is only for reference political ideology by andrew haywood is only for reference because in this book itself that is hp gauba book itself maximum of the syllabus is getting covered okay western political thoughts by ob kauba again it's selected topics because in western political thoughts there are even many thinkers which who are all not there in our syllabus is also there we have only plato aristotle machiavelli hobbes locke mill marx gramsci and anna hadran anna hadran will not be there i'll give you notes for it okay then indian political thoughts you can follow my notes alone that is more than sufficient if additionally you want you can follow igno notes alone it is available in the internet you can download but i will suggest you to follow only my notes that is more than sufficient okay so the dd basu not required if you want 
to read something apart from lakshmi kant i am bored of lakshmi kant studying again and again lakshmi kant for my years i got my pages are looking very clumsy i have underlined i it is not horrible for me to open the lakshmi kant again means you can go for dd basu that to full dd basu i will not suggest first 100 pages alone because till fundamental duties the writings is very good if needed you can go for it otherwise not needed so lakshmi kant already you have covered not an issue at all so bipin chandra you have normal ncert bipin chandra is more than sufficient for modern india don't want to go for the big book and all not needed it is unnecessary waste of time okay then this book if needed you can buy that is indian government and politics by fadia this needed you can buy for the second paper this two books are more than sufficient second paper fully two books one is global politics by andrew haywood and does the elephant dance by david m malon this two books are more than sufficient and these books are going to be only for reference purpose my notes is going to be the primary source of reference for you okay each and everything very crisp short notes i'll give you only thing is that you want to understand the topic and you want to link it with the current events in the case of second uh, part of second paper with regard to first paper you just follow my notes and take op gauba that is more than sufficient understanding what i am saying so any any uh, issues with respect to the reference books anything online students need to ask online students yeah ha uh ha -huh. no 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 it is just like for example you want to know about the background of uh, relationship of india with other countries in a broader sense you can have it it is a very lucid book actually and one more thing is that in that india israel relations and all will be there that and all not at all needed so in syllabus what and all is there that chapters alone you should read for example india pakistan is there india east asia it is there okay india usa is there that portions alone india israel and all it is it is not required india and uh, india and some small countries you will write something that and all not required and if you already have a broad understanding about india's relationship with other countries it is not at all needed current affairs itself you can write the answer because that part that part is actually current oriented only so now what is the relationship between india and russia you can write an answer yes but apart from that you want to quote certain things what the thinkers or the writers are saying that i will teach you how to write that's it okay any other doubts any other doubts for online students can you please share the syllabus and this presentation by <coughs> syllabus is already there in your internet if you want you can get it but we don't have a uh, like uh, like medium to actually share this presentation if you are uh, if you are registering any anyway like we are we will we'll create a telegram group in which all the details of the classes my materials everything will be shared but i'll suggest my students to write the notes i i'll not suggest to give a print out and you read it no i'll not suggest that i'll want all my students to write which is a basic requirement of my classes from your side you want to write the notes so that gives you one thing first thing it will make you to write in a good handwriting and second thing is that it will it will help you to speed your writing process which is the most important thing in upsc mains where many students will not complete the paper if you are completing the paper you are half way through that's it okay so i want all my students to write the notes i'll give you dictation you want to write so that is very very important okay so more or less around 400 to 500 around 600 pages of notes i'll give you okay which is more than sufficient for your entire preparation apart from the second part i am telling apart from this uh, uh, indian polity indian polity if i again teach it will be very lengthy uh, classes so that will be covered anyway in your uh, gs but still for the people who are coming from other academies other branches where i am not taking polity i will give you the notes of my polity notes that is actually given for my students in general studies i'll give you and if you have any problem personally i'll teach you also that is not an issue at all if people want me to teach the entire polity then i can give some classes for it and give you a glimpses about that also it depends on how you demand the service will be provided that is the thing okay online students sir i Hasan. have a doubt hello yeah yeah your name uh, please my name is hasan ansar yeah hasan please tell me hasan uh, yes sir uh, international relation is a dynamic topic sir so Uh, will these books help uh, to cover this actually because this is a dynamic topic so uh, this is regularly changing 
this is my question. that's what that's what that's what i mean to say see here yeah? it is regularly changing but there is a base for international relations right there is a okay. base for example you will write the updates for example the question is with respect to india pakistan relations means you cannot write what is happening now alone you need to write something which has happened in the past for that that book will give you an understanding okay what happened in 1940s what happened in 1950s so politics is nothing but it is a continuation of history yes or no yes without history politics is not there okay so for having a basic understanding about what is the relationship between india and us what is 123 agreement there is an agreement called 123 agreement how will you know about this agreement without knowing the relationship between india and usa in the past that is a nuclear deal between india and us you can write a contemporary answer but you want to quote certain things which has happened in the past right so for that you need a basic understanding about what is the relationship between india and us russia and all that will enrich your answer so i am not telling you to study the entire history of india and the usa relation i am telling you that you should know certain things important things which has happened between india and usa for that purpose you can go through that book if you already have an idea about it well and good you can follow with the current happenings that is more than sufficient i have answered your question yes hasan yes sir it is clear to me sir yeah others others if sir, you want to ask can a you question you can unmute your mic and you can ask a question can you hear yeah. me sir non alignment movement yes yeah 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 yes sir yeah nothing will change if you write whatever we are teaching here you will get a good mark no no nothing 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 the thing is that see non al movement is same for everyone it is not going to change it has already happened so how is it relevant or not means now it is relevant or not mean that i'll teach you it is relevant or not it is in, in a class i cannot tell what is non alignment in interaction class I, because non al movement itself i'll teach for 2 hours or 2 and a half hours so i cannot tell you now but the thing is that whatever we are going to discuss in the class will be more than sufficient to write and essay that's what i mean to say someone was asking in online right yeah someone was about to an, uh, ask a question in online can you please ask a question yes sir can you hear me yeah yes please sir is it necessary to uh, read bipin chandra if i if i'm using uh, just spectrum? follow just, just follow ncert bipin chandra not the commercial one okay ncert sir. bipin chandra is there old ncert you call it as old it's a small book just follow that don't buy the big book which is available in the market green color book no that is not required this much big it will be there no your normal ncert bipin chandra is sufficient for that part see uh, mostly around 3 30 marks will be asked from that that you can manage with whatever you studied from your ncert alone see bipin chandra ncert also written by actually bipin chandra only that's what i mean to say here i am not saying the commercial book which is available have i answered your question yes sir thank you yes uh, anandan anandan sir i am from shankara s academy in chennai i have paid my optional fees here can i attend your classes here so the thing is that if you are if you are if you are paid in chennai you want to take the classes from laptop only you want to intimate to the front office that you are going to take from bangalore you will get the access from bangalore you want to attend the classes in your laptop you will get the zoom id for every day classes anandan to your question you need to go to the front office and tell that i am going to take psa or optional from bangalore they will route you how to take they'll give you the access to the bangalore branch once you get the access regularly you will get the zoom id for your classes you can take the classes whenever you want to talk and people who are registering i'll give my personal number to you any time you can call me except my sleeping time because some people will call at 12 o'clock 1 o'clock and last year i had that issue in the in the office hours or up to 9 o'clock any time i will be available whenever i am not in classes sometime i will be taking gs classes that time i cannot attend your call after completing the calls i will give you a call so that will be the mode of communication telegram is there my phone number will be personal number will be given to all the students who are registering for psir then every day we will be meeting in the classes too and after the classes over also i will be in regular touch with you whenever you write mains or whatever it is i'll personally guide you okay hasan shall we have a telegram group for online students for all the students we will have not only for telegram students for all the students who are registering uh, sorry uh, not only for the online students for all the students there will be a telegram channel and also a group okay then 
Any other questions, online students? You can ask a questions. Whatever it is, sir. How you con? How to register and contact? See, Bona, you are from uh, which place? You are from which place? You are from Shankarai's Academy. Other branches, or you are from? Please tell me where are you from? I'll tell you how to register. Yeah. Recorded videos are there. Google Teams. We will actually give you an access to Google Teams. For example, if you are actually three things are there. One is live. Another is online. Another is recorded video. Live. You are coming here. Offline. You are coming here and taking the classes. Another thing. For example, you are not well. You are not able to come to class. You can take in online from your home itself. Zoom access will be given to you. If you missed the class, means you can see the recorded videos. Three things are there. Okay. Yeah. Shankaraya Academy. Which branch, Bona? Chennai or some other branches like Madurai, Tiruchi, Coimbatore, which branch? Bangalore. Bangalore, you can come to second floor and you can register. Maria will be there in second floor, accountant. You can register there. Is there any other doubts for the people who are in other branches? You are from Kolkata. Okay, no issues. You can call Shankar Ice Academy, Bangalore. The front office people will guide you to register. I'll write Shankar Ice Academy, Bangalore's uh, number in the screen. You just note it down. Just a minute. This is the number of Shankar Ayes Academy, Bangalore. Just call and you can, uh, they will route you how to register. My name is Premanan Makwana. I think you are from Shillong, Parul Makwana, right? Yeah, my name is Premanan, Prem Anand. Okay, so yeah, Gujarat, okay. So you can call to this number to register in the daytime. Office hours between 10 to 6 o'clock. You can call at any time to this number and you can register. Okay. I'll give my number also. If some somewhere if the office number is busy, you can also call to my number. This is my number. You can call me also, anyone, and register for the course. If you are offline students, do you have any doubts? So newspaper reading is compulsory for UPC itself. <laughs> the thing is, there's a problem. That the people used to ask me, sir, you are telling that PSR is a dynamic paper. So do, should I need to study the newspaper daily? See, if you're not studying the newspaper daily, GS itself, we cannot score. That is the reality. See, for example, you can take, for example, there is a static subject called history. Okay, you take history and you can score very high mark in history without even touching the newspaper. That is called, you can even score 290, 300 also. But... Your GS score. What about your GS score? And you want to understand one thing. The weightage for GS is more than optional. Yes or no? Scoring will be high in optional. But 1,250 marks are from GS, including essay. Four GS papers, 1,000 and one essay paper. So, 1,250 marks. 500 marks for optional. So, what I mean to say here is that if you are preparing for this 500 marks, it should give a lot of benefits for you in this 1,250 marks, that PSAR will definitely do. That I can give you a surety. And one more thing is that one of the stable subjects is PSAR. For the last five, six years, if you see, because of PSAR, I didn't qualify mains. There can be not even a 0.1 percentage of the candidate. Because PSAR is very stable. It, see, the average score always revolves around 270 to 280, which is very high score in some optionals. Nowadays, literature subjects and all, getting 260 itself, it is very difficult. You can go and inquire into the seniors who are writing the mains and all. 270 and all, it is unimaginable score in 
uh, literature subjects. Just go and talk with some people who have given PSAR as a means. Easily they would have scored 260. They would have they would have not qualified or something like that because of any other reason, but not because of PSAR. That surety I can give you. It will not pull you down. Okay. So it will be stable or it will push you up. That surety I can give you. Okay. Any other doubts from online? Please feel uh, free to ask your doubts now itself. Because hereafter, there will not be a demo class. Straight away, you want to register, we'll meet in the classes only. No doubts? Shall we wind up the session? Sanjay, Subhashini, Gaushik, Gokul, many students are there. Okay then, so thank you for attending the session. So hope we'll be seeing uh, many of the faces in the regular classes. So any help you can call me at any time and get it clarified. So classes will start on 21st of September. Okay, thank you. Thank you for attending the session. Thank you online students. Sir, will there be any printout materials? See printout materials I'll give you for few chapters, but mostly I'll ask you to write in my Classes that is very important for your preparation. Hazen to your question. Call the person who is outside. Hello, sir. Yeah, Hello. who is this? Can you Hassan. tell your name? Yes, Hassan answer. Hassan, yeah, please, Hassan, please tell me. Yes, sir. I am talking about the printed materials. How can I get, sir? I am from Kolkata. So, will it be courier? No, no, the thing is that we'll share you the soft copy. If you need, we will uh, courier you. That is not an issue. But the printed material quantity is very less. So, you want to write only. I will give you the notes. You want to write. That is very, very important. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank okay. you. Any other doubts? Arun Prasad, 